What I found was actually enacted back in 1812. So it tells you how old this stuff is and technically from everything I was reading, this stuff is in effect still today. But what it says, it restricts conduct rather than carry with respect to swords, uh, rapiers, and any other deadly weapon. What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today I'm going to continue with some of the South Carolina carry law stuff that we've been doing because I have gotten uh, some phone calls, even emails with questions around um, knives, uh, especially with people that have are newer to the state of South Carolina and I've even had some questions around brass knuckles as well too because uh, there are some states where it is legal and we are one of them. We're going to talk a lot about that and I'm, I'm kind of a rabbit hole person so I, I ended up down a rabbit hole and I got into nunchucks, swords, rapiers, tasers, stun guns and what else did we get into here? Hatchets, axes. I got a lot into uh, your other weapons when it comes to this stuff and I figured, what the heck, I'm down this rabbit hole, let's put some of this stuff together and let's get a video out there to help everybody understand you know, where some of this stuff stands with South Carolina. The first little caveat I'm gonna give, or I should say disclaimer is one, I'm mainly focusing on South Carolina. If you're not in South Carolina, make sure you check your laws on this stuff when it comes to these things, because they're, especially with the brass knuckles, the nunchucks, these are kind of oddball weapons, a lot of states, it is illegal. Within South Carolina, check your city and your counties because they can put in ordinances. Uh, when I dug into this and went down that rabbit hole right now, the only ones that I found right now are, of course, not a shocker, Greenville, Columbia, and Charleston do have ordinances in place with some of this stuff. And we're gonna get, I'll go over what those statutes said for each Greenville, Columbia, and Charleston toward the end of the video. But right now, what I'm gonna start with is uh, the brass knuckles, and I'm gonna kinda go brass knuckles, stun guns, tasers, nunchucks, and kind of lead my way into the knives. But with the brass knuckles, a lot of the stuff I found when it comes to brass knuckles, there's nothing that says you cannot possess them. It really referring to the intent that you're going to have with them. So what I mean is, what it says, it is illegal to possess brass knuckles if they are used with the intent to commit a crime. For self-defense, everything I found, you're pretty much legal. But another quick disclaimer before we start getting into this, this is also going to depend on the law enforcement that responds, how they're going to interpret this stuff, and the prosecutor for your area on how they're going to interpret this stuff. But when you get in here and read this, the only actual coded written law is 1623, 16-23-540A. Uh, it is unlawful for a person to sell, rent, give away, or participate directly or indirectly in the sale, renting, or giving away of plastic, metal, or brass knuckles in this state. Now, some of y'all are probably like, well, wait a minute, I've gone to gun shows and seen stuff there. All right, if you really look, they're selling a belt buckle or a paperweight or whatever they're gonna call it. Well, again, I, I went down a rabbit hole with some of this stuff. I actually found one company, they make a bottle opener. Looks, wears, just like brass knuckles. Uh, what they did is in the little palm piece, instead of it being solid, they cut a little slot, and they've got demonstration videos showing you how to open bottles with it. So it's a bottle opener, it's not brass knuckles. It's all back on wordplay. 
is what all that boils down to. It all goes back to wordplay, and then when you're looking at the law, it goes back to the intent use of whatever you're having. So yes, with brass knuckles, they are legal to carry. There's nothing that says you have to open carry them or anything like that. You can conceal carry them, but it's based off the intent. You just cannot possess if they're being used with the intent to commit a crime. Nunchucks. So with nunchucks, legal to possess for martial arts or self-defense. And there's nothing that really, Sorry, I've got a couple of different things out here. I couldn't remember all this stuff, so I had to jot some of it down, print some of it up. But there's nothing with the nunchucks that said you cannot conceal carry or open carry. Just, again, like I talked about in a long gun video, if you want attention, throw some of this stuff on and go walk around with it. You're gonna get attention. So yes, with brass knuckles, I'm sorry, with nunchucks, legal to possess, martial arts or self-defense. What it does say is section 21-211, possession or sale of blackjack slingshots, or see it says metal knuckles. When you go in and actually look, there is a difference between metal and brass knuckles. I'm not gonna get into that. You can go do your own research on that. I'm mainly talking about what the law says with some of the stuff. So it shall be unlawful to own, possess, carry, or display any instrument or weapon of the kind commonly known as blackjack, slung shot, sling shot, billy club, sand club, sand bag. I'm not really sure what they're talking about there metal knuckles or bludgeon or any martial art weapon such as but not limited to forgive me if i pronounce some of this stuff wrong i'm sure uh, some of you keyboard warriors will correct me on this manchuka manchaka m-u-n-c-h-a-k-u uh sai s-a-i uh shirkin shirkan however you say that s uh h-u-r-i-k-a-n uh, it says eight pointed uh, sharpened star, I'm, I'm assuming probably ninja star, and ma, M-A or may, I don't know how you say that. So that's the only actual written code for things you cannot actually possess and carry on you. So there's your brass knuckles, there's your nunchucks. If we wanna look at uh, stun guns and tasers, there is a little bit of a difference when it comes to stun guns and tasers. So stun gun, according to South Carolina law, it is legal for individuals to possess stun guns. However, individuals must be at least 18 years of age or older to possess a stun gun. Additionally, stun guns cannot be carried onto, of course, school property, government buildings, places where firearm is prohibited by federal, or firearms are prohibited. While stun guns are legal to possess, they can only be used for self-defense purposes. It is illegal to use a stun gun on a person for any other reason. <laughs> I'm sorry, the only reason that I laugh at that uh, is I could see some of my buddies doing something stupid and sitting there um, stunning or tasting the shit out of each other. So, hey, hey, it is what it is. But just understand, if you hit somebody with a stun gun and they get pissed and they call the law, that is any other reason. All right, you weren't doing it for self-defense. Now, tasers. Tasers are legal to possess in South Carolina. However, there are certain restrictions on their use. And I didn't know this about tasers. In order to purchase a taser in South Carolina, individuals must be at least 21 years or older and pass a background check. Did not know that. Additionally, tasers cannot be carried onto school property, government buildings, and places where firearms are prohibited. Uh, they can only be used by law enforcement officers or individuals in self-defense situations. It is illegal to use a taser on a person for any other reason. Uh, violating stun gun and taser laws in South Carolina can result in serious penalties. Possession of a stun gun or taser by persons under the age of 18 is a misdemeanor offense and can result in a fine and or imprisonment. 
carrying a stun gun, of course, onto proper school property, government buildings, and places where firearms are prohibited is also a misdemeanor and can result in a fine and or imprisonment. Uh, using a stun gun or taser for any other reason other than self-defense is where it gets serious. Using a stun gun or taser on a person for any other reason other than self-defense is a felony offense and can result in a fine and or imprisonment. And if you're convicted of a felony, you can technically never legally be around firearms and uh, it's, it's bad. So that's where it gets serious. So if you're caught under 18 or in the wrong place, misdemeanor. If you're caught <laughs> using them for any other reason than self-defense, it's felony, folks. So uh, I guess I can say uh, some of my friends and I have <laughs> committed felonies. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, sometimes you just sit around and get bored and do stupid stuff. So now let's look at axes and hatchets. Axes and hatchets, you cannot conceal carry, but there is no law that says you cannot open carry them. Just understand you will draw attention, all right, and check your city and your county to see what ordinances are in place, if any. Like I was saying earlier, like I said in my long gun video, if you want attention, slap some of this stuff on and go walk. Again, axes and hatchets cannot conceal carry, but nothing says you cannot open carry. Swords. So I got swords, um, rapier, all right, things like that. You could even kind of classify machetes under this category as well, too. What I found was actually enacted back in 1812. So it tells you how old this stuff is and technically from everything I was reading, this stuff is in effect still today. But what it says, it restricts conduct rather than carry with respect to swords, uh, rapiers, and any other deadly weapon. So again, it's going to be based on their interpretation. It provides that it is unlawful to convey or accept a challenge to fight another individual with a sword or rapier. Again, it is unlawful for a person to challenge uh, another to a fight with a sword, rapier, or any other deadly weapon. Uh, a person who violates this section is guilty of a misdemeanor upon conviction must be imprisoned for not more than two years. So. That's just, you do not pass go, go straight to jail. Do not collect $200. Um, a person convicted under this section is deprived of the right of suffrage and is disabled from holding any office, honor, trust, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the only case, I did actually when I was digging into this, find a case where this was uh, actually involved, it was uh, Cunningham versus the state, uh, and it was decided in 1843. So again, very, very old, but if you slap one of these on and go walk around, this is probably what the lawyer you get is probably gonna go in and reference carrying a sword in South Carolina, absent criminal intent, goes back to intent, or entry onto school grounds is not unlawful. So nothing says that you can't, it's just based off your intent. Uh, some of the other stuff, South Carolina does not allow the concealed carry of and also permits the ownership of any other types of knives, including Bowie knives, large knives, throwing stars, throwing knives, camouflage knives, undefeatable knives didn't look that up don't no clue what they're talking about have fun with that one uh, daggers and stiletto heels <laughs> so there you go now again greenville charleston columbia they've got ordinances in place um same thing there with the sword stuff so there's your axes and your swords as well too um, when it comes to sorry i'm just double checking make sure i didn't miss anything with the swords and stuff like i said i got found a lot of stuff i, I tried to organize it 
uh, best I could. There was a thing for residents and visitors in South Carolina is impaired to understand the legal nuances, unlawful involvement in the distribution of brass knuckles or their use in criminal activities can lead to serious legal repercussions, including misdemeanor charges, fines, and or imprisonment. The state's legal system, like I've always talked about, is a legal system, not a justice system, underscores a preventative approach aimed at curbing potential violence while not entirely criminalizing possession. Again, back to the intent. And I would also recommend you uh, check out or consult a lawyer. I would try to make sure that it is a self-defense attorney when it comes to this stuff. I would not go to just any lawyer. I would make sure that you go to a self-defense attorney when it comes to this stuff. Now, knife laws. South Carolina is an open carry state for knives. There is no blade length restriction on knives carried openly. This means you can legally carry a fixed blade knife, folding knife, or any other type of knife in a sheath or holster attached to your belt or clothing. Open carry does not guarantee acceptance in all situations. Private businesses may have policies restricting knives on their premises. It's always best to check signage or inquire with management before entering the building with a knife openly displayed. Even if you just want to be like, oh, state law says I do, and they go and you go in there, same thing if they find out you're carrying a gun. Any place has the right to serve who they want to serve, whether it's you're carrying a knife, a hatchet, an ax, a gun, you've got a shirt on they don't like, a hat on that they don't like, they have the right to serve who they want to serve. Now, concealed carry, South Carolina allows the uh, South Carolina law allows for the concealed carry of knives. There is no permit required for concealed knife carry, unlike firearms. Uh, there is, goes back to the code I read earlier, 16-23-460 the intent of them. All right, now where the blade restrictions come in are with your school property. All right, on school property, individuals cannot carry knives with a blade exceeding two inches unless you are law enforcement or authorized school personnel. So when it comes to schools, two inches or less on that knife blade. Anywhere else, there is no technical length uh, where it becomes illegal again, the intent, uh, federal buildings have restrictions, disorderly conduct, all right, what they're talking about there is brandishing a knife in a, so brandishing any, really honestly, brandishing not just a knife, brandishing any weapon in a threatening manner, all right, even if legal to carry can be considered disorderly conduct and lead to an arrest, and then minor possession, all right, because what it says, South Carolina knife law generally applies to adults, and again, local ordinances may have specific restrictions on minors carrying knives and things like that. So that's what it boils down to there. Uh, places of worship, uh, kind of same thing going into stores, stuff like that. They can uh, have their own uh, laws in place and different things like that. So there's your knife stuff. All this stuff is out there. You can go and look it up, you know, if you don't believe me with some of this stuff, but I wanted to do the research. Like I said, I ended up down a huge rabbit hole with this stuff, but I wanted to go over and get it out here for everybody. So I hope, you know, it'll help you understand when it comes to knives and some of these other weapons. Now, like I said, I would talk about the ordinances that are in Charleston, Columbia, and Greenville. Charleston, their ordinance prohibits concealed carry of any ice pick, knife, dagger with a blade exceeding three inches in length. It doesn't talk about open carry, so there's no definition in there on open carry, but again, it's all on their interpretation. It's just saying uh, you cannot conceal carry. But just understand, if you put this stuff on and go walk around, you're gonna deal with law enforcement and that prosecutor and their interpretation. Columbia, 
uh, prohibits carrying concealed or otherwise. So concealed or otherwise means concealed or open. Any pistol, dirk, uh, butcher knife, case knife, sword, spear, cane, metal knuckles, razors, or other weapons of offense within the corporate limits of the city. I don't know what their interpretation of that is. You have had a prohibency possession or sale of any switchblade knife within the city. Greenville prohibits the carrying, concealed or otherwise, of any knife and further uh, provides the possession of a locked blade knife or sporting knife in excess of three inches or greater gives rise to inference that the device is a weapon used for the infliction of personal injury. So they're not even going to try to let you claim self-defense on that one. So there's your... Uh, three cities that I did find with actual ordinances, but these laws always change, so make sure you're checking this stuff out. If you have questions, if there's something that I did not answer, my contact information is on my website. I've got Linktree and all linked into all of my videos, even the YouTube page where it's got ways for you to get in contact with me. Reach out, I'll be glad to help you. If it's something that I don't know, I've got plenty of contacts that I can reach out to and find that information out. Um, or, again, consult an attorney. Make sure, I would highly make sure it is a self-defense attorney. Call the Attorney General's office. Call South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Don't know what kind of help you'll get, but they're out there for you. I'll do my best to help you out in any way that I can. Um, Real quick, I want to thank everybody for the continued support, watching, sharing, commenting, all that great stuff, subscribing. Uh, we are now at a point where we are offering memberships, and then we have uh, super chats, super thanks, and super comments, different things like that that you can go in and purchase. Anything that you can do would be greatly appreciated. This will help us continue to provide better content and it will help us be able to get better equipment and also help the school grow with making improvements to the range, maybe uh, in the future even getting enough to add another range where we can offer more stuff, better targets and things like that. So anything that you can do is greatly appreciated. I understand times are hard right now, uh, but anything you can do is greatly pre appreciated. Please, please, the supers are there. If you find a comment that you really like or a video you really like and you want to throw some thanks and throw a little bit more support out there, that's what those are for. That's a one-time purchase. But I've got different levels of the membership where you're going to get members-only videos. Uh, we're going to have one of those uploaded pretty soon with the... Uh, kind of some of the behind the scenes stuff that you can look at um, on down the road. I'll be uploading some of my training videos where I'm out practicing training classes, some of my BJJ stuff. So if you want to watch me get my ass kicked, some of that stuff is going to be getting uploaded for the members only videos. Uh, you'll be listed in the credits and other great things are going to be constantly added as we grow. So again, thank you all, all very much. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. Please continue to support. And always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.